unintelligent design. <clears throat> I'll be defending the following thesis in this series of videos. That thesis, if there is unintelligent design in the world, that in no way mitigates the prior presence of intelligent design. Again, if there is unintelligent design in the world, that in no way mitigate uh, mitigates the prior presence of intentional design. Okay, so intentional design is different from intelligent design. The intelligent design movement, the ID movement, uh, for example, is normally posed as an alternative, uh, intelligent design is normally posed as an alternative, to some sort of evolution. It is also tied into the writings and thinking of Philip Johnson, Michael Behe, William Dembski, and others. Intentional design bears no necessary connection to these persons or irreducible complexity or anti-evolution. Rather, a system in nature is intentionally designed if and only if it consists of multiple parts which work together for an end which end was intended by at least one designer. So, uh, as Philo suggested, there could be more than one designer. Uh, but there is at least one designer. If there is intentional design, there is at least one intentional designer. And by the term prior in that definition, I mean temporally prior in our consideration. We ponder the intentional design first, let us say, and only after this do we ponder uh, any cases of unintelligent design. Unintelligent design comes in three possible forms. One, suboptimal design. Two, bad design. Three, null design. Excuse me. A system is suboptimally designed if and only if it is intentionally designed but could have been designed better. A system is badly designed if and only if it was intentionally designed in such a way as to promote the evil intention of the designer. Uh, so it could be that this designer is evil and if he is he has some malicious intent in designing things in a certain way. Uh, that, that is a possibility. Desi designing uh, a human body, for example, so that the human will suffer. And thirdly, a system is null designed if and only if it was not intentionally designed uh, in the first place. It is clear that the third possibility is not a true case of design. Let's agree to call the first two possibilities UD or UD1 and UD2 respectively for the first and second possibilities. So suboptimal design is UD1 bad design is UD2. Both UD1 and 2 are legitimate cases of intentional design by definition, so they certainly don't mitigate against genuine intentional design. But null design is compatible with intentional design too, for it could be that the intentional designer or designers only designed some of the systems of nature. Uh, they came upon pre-existing eternal matter, for example, rearranged some of that matter, left others of it to uh, evolve on its own. And of course, I'm not speaking biological evolution there, uh, but just change over time. Although it could include biological evolution as well. Okay, so the the null design is compatible with intentional design. For it could be, uh, as I said, that uh, some of matter was designed, some of it was not. If we really do find real intentional design in at least one system of nature, then any null system shall not and cannot nullify this fact. Now, the original thesis, you can see, is sound. But we can say more. The proponent of the design argument normally has God in mind, and God is normally thought to be both good and omnipotent. Omnipotence seems to preclude suboptimal design, and goodness seems to preclude bad design. And yet both sorts of UD are present in at least some natural systems. Or are they? 
I submit to you that when looking for possible occurrences of suboptimal design, suboptimal design that is that should really worry us, we should be focusing all our attentions upon human beings. If our goldfish is suboptimally designed and therefore dies because of that uh, suboptimal design, that is sad, but is it really the end of the world? No, we should be much more concerned as fellow human beings when human beings suffer or when human beings die as a result of suboptimal design. Furthermore, we don't like to suffer pain, but that, our feeling of pain, is not quite so bad as actually dying. We want to avoid physical pain as much as we possibly can. Nevertheless, I think what we truly fear is not pain per se, uh, but death and dying. The experience of pain is a helpful and in some ways a good tool to keep us uh, from death. Of course, this tool does not work perfectly, for we all ultimately do die, and there are uh, cases, it seems, where suffering physical pain in a particular instance is not directly linked uh, with the preservation of life. Nevertheless, we should not be overly concerned with mere suffering. Actual human death should be our primary concern. Are there, then, instances where people die as a direct result of suboptimal design of the human body? Uh, so that's the question we're going to consider. Uh, are there any cases where uh, people, human beings, die because their, their bodies, the human body, is UD1. A good candidate for this would be the appendix. Our appendix serves little if any useful purpose and in certain extreme cases of appendicitis the afflicted human will die. The appendix will uh, fill up with food, it won't be able to escape, and uh, perhaps it will rupture and eventually the human from this uh, chronic appendicitis will die. Okay. And, and having an appendix doesn't really seem to help us out in, in any meaningful way. And, and, this hum and this seeming fact that the appendix in humans was uh, uh, suboptimally designed uh, can undermine our confidence in the goodness and omnipotence of God. It can undermine our confidence, but it doesn't have to. Why do I say this? Well, because it could be that chronic appendicitis was not part of God's original plan. It could be that in the original economy, God providentially shielded us from chronic appendicitis, and only after some sort of fall from grace on the part of humanity, we no longer have that shielding. This is indeed the Christian view of what has happened, as I understand it. So we have, uh, according to Christianity, we have stepped out from under God's economy, his original economy, and his shielding. But this suggestion, even if it is false, is a genuine possibility, and what that means is that there is no necessary conflict between there being a God who is both good and all-powerful on the one hand, and on the other hand, there also being chronic appendicitis in the world.